this lecture is looking at um, kind of reviewing polyatomic ions and then kind of giving you some practice examples and then solutions of me working through those. And before you watch this lecture, you want to review uh, your written lecture on polyatomic ions because that's going to really introduce this. Um, really what I'm doing is just showing you a, you a few more examples of your polyatomic ions and then some uh, sample practice examples to go through. And so. So if we look at another polyatomic example, okay, and we want to say determine the formula and let's choose between uh, barium ion, which is barium 2 plus, it's in group 2A, and let's do phosphate. Okay, PO4, 3 minus. So what we're looking at here is we can still follow our cross charge that we've been talking about from section 5.2 and 5.3. Okay, we can still take our cation and our anion. And we're going to take the numerical value from our cation that crosses over for our anion. And same thing, but opposite for our anion. And we always want to keep our polyatomics together. Okay. So when we do that, if we need multiple polyatomics, what we want to do is put parentheses around our polyatomic. Okay, so we're saying that that PO4 is staying together and in this case we need two of them. So we need two PO4s and then we always list our metal first and we need three of those for every two of our phosphates. We do our last check to make sure that we don't need to reduce those two numbers. So our final answer for this is going to be BA3PO42. If we were to name this, again we're just naming with our ion names. So we had barium ion and the phosphate ion. So this would be barium phosphate. All right. When you work through some examples on the sapling uh, online site, whenever they work with, um, not phosphates, but uh, polyatomic ions, they may work with more than I asked you to, to memorize, to know. So you'll want to consult the chart in your book um, which should have more complete polyatomics. If there is some random one that shows up, please let me know um, and I can go in and remove that from the options that you guys see. Um, all right, so what I'd like you to do for some more practice is go ahead and kind of fill out this table. Okay, I'm going to give you some names and I would like to, you to give me the formulas or if I give you the formula, give me the name.
So as usual, try these out on your own. Go ahead and pause the video. And then when you are ready or you get stuck, unpause it and I will give you some solutions. All right, CSI, okay, cool show. Uh, but in this case, we're looking at a compound. Uh, so CS is cesium, I is iodine, but it comes in the ionic form. So we have IDE, so this is cesium iodide. We have RH3P2. So our basic name here, we have rhodium and phosphide. But rhodium is a transition metal, so we need to have Roman numerals there. So if I do my cross charge, my rhodium will have a 2 plus. Phosphorus has a 3 minus. Okay. Phosphorus should have a 3 minus. It's in group 5A. It needs three more electrons, so it'll have a three negative charge, which means that my rhodium has a two plus charge. So my final name is rhodium 2 phosphide. Francium fluoride. Francium is FR. It's in group 1A. So it's going to have one valence electron that it's going to lose to form a plus one charge. The fluoride ion has a negative one charge. We just need a one to one ratio. So we have FRF. For calcium sulfide, calcium forms a two plus. It's in group 2A. Sulfur is in group 6A. It wants two more electrons. So it has a two negative. We need a one to one ratio for that. So we have CAS. If you did your cross charge method, okay, you get CA2S2, but don't forget that you these are both even, so we need to reduce those down to the lowest multiple. K3P, okay, K is potassium, P in the ion form is phosphide, so we have potassium phosphide. It's also a very important distinction here. Potassium starts with a P, but its symbol is a capital K. Okay, potassium is a metal, so make sure that you keep potassium and phosphide separated. Potassium is K, phosphide is P. Okay. For palladium 3 phosphide, we have PD3. Plus. Remember that Roman numeral tells us nothing about the formula just tells us the charge, so we have to figure out what our formula is. Phosphide has a three negative. We need a one to one ratio for that, or if we do our cross charge, we get PD3, P3. We can reduce those down to a one to one ratio, so we have PD, P. Ni3PO32. Nickel is a transition metal, so we have to figure out its charge first. So we do a cross charge. The 2 goes to the nickel, the 3 to the PO3, which is phosphite. So we have nickel 2 plus, PO3, 3 minus. So we have nickel. 2 phosphite. Then for barium nitrate, okay, barium is Ba. It has a charge of 2 plus. We have nitrate. This ATE tells us that that is a polyatomic and not the ion nitride. Okay, so nitrate is NO3, and it has a negative one charge. 
So we bring the two down for the nitrate, which we'll have to put parentheses around. The one goes to the barium. So we end up with BaNO3 two. Now it's important to be able to identify between a polyatomic, okay, which has either an A-T-E ending or an I-T-E ending, usually, versus just a single element that forms the ion, which gets the I-D-E. Okay. So, I know one more example to look at if we looked at barium nitride, then we're looking at Ba2 plus combining with N3 minus, that's the nitride ion. Then we're looking at Ba3N2. Okay, so it's worth lots and lots and lots of practice, as many examples as you can get through. Okay, and especially want to distinguish between your ions and your polyatomic ions, IDE versus the ATE and the ITEs, and practice with your Roman numerals for your transition metals.